Hi everyone, we are still on the unit of solutions, okay? So in this video, we will be talking about the pressure and temperature effects on solutions, particularly uh, on the solubility of a solid or a gas in a particular solvent. So this is in line with our second learning target, which is to examine the effects of temperature and pressure on the solubility of a gas or a solid. So solubility is affected by two factors. Uh, first one is temperature. The second one is pressure. Now take note that uh, there may be different effects for gases or for liquids and solids because uh, solids and liquids are not particularly affected by the by pressure, but gases are because they have less they have more space between them. All right, as we will see later on, okay? So for solids in solution, uh, temperature effects, as temp if you can see here in the graph, as the temperature increases from zero to 100, there is also an observed upward trend of the solubility, okay? Which is the amount of solute that can be dissolved in a particular solvent. So in here, it is given in the units grams of salt in 100 grams of water. Okay, so it's the amount of salt that can be dissolved in 100 grams of water in the y-axis. Okay, and in the x-axis, we have uh, the temperature, which, which is our independent variable. So what this graph is trying to tell us is that as temperature increases, so does the amount of salt that can be dissolved in a particular solvent. All right, so for, you can see general trends for lead nitrate or for calcium chloride. So there is really an upward or even an exponential uh, trend in terms of the solubility, okay? So the higher the temperature, uh, the greater the solubility because as temperature increases, molecules move faster and cause dissolution to occur faster okay so the more collisions there will be for the solute and the solvent particles then the more soluble your uh, salt or the solute becomes and then we have here uh, an exception of a uh, cerium sulfate okay CeSO4 sub 3 so if you notice it plateaus at a certain uh, a range of temperatures and it it deviates from the behavior of other solutes in uh, aqueous solutions. All right, so that's one a particular exception. Now, uh, what we have shown you is a solubility curve. Okay, a solubility curve is a graph that shows the relationship between the temperature and solubility of different salts. Now, again, solubility is the amount or the mass of solutes that can be dissolved in a given solvent at a specific temperature. So when you talk about solubility, that means you also have to uh, specify the temperature. So for example, uh, when you take uh, potassium nitrate, KNO3, represented by the green uh, curve here, so we say that at um, its solubility is 30 grams of 30 grams of potassium nitrate dissolve can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius all right so 30 grams okay 30 grams of potassium nitrate can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius Okay, uh, another example, uh, let's see if we can find a close one uh, to uh, one's value here. Uh, here, uh, KCL represented by the blue line. KCL, uh, so at 70 degrees Celsius, j just look at the uh, where it falls in the x-axis. So at 70 degrees Celsius, the solubility of KCl is more or less of 48, okay? 48 grams KCl in 100 grams of water. All right, so that's how you read the solubility curve. And we can do the same for the rest. So we look at uh, how much can be dissolved at a particular temperature. 
right? So that is solubility. Now, for gases in solution, the solubility of gases in water uh, increases with increasing mass. And that is because uh, larger molecules have stronger dispersion forces. If you try to recall your IMF, okay? So London dispersion forces uh, are stronger if you have a larger molecule because there is a lot of instantaneous uh, dipoles created with larger electron clouds. Alright, so for example here, nitrogen gas, uh, solubility is given in terms of the molarity. Okay, uh, in here it's given in molarity, we'll, we will be talking about uh, expressing concentrations later on. Alright, but if you've noticed as the, as the atoms get larger from N2 to Kr, so does the solubility. Now, uh, solubility of liquids and solids do not change appreciably with pressure. However, the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to its pressure. Okay, so as represented by the pictures here. So the more gas particles will be incorporated once there is lesser space and more frequent collisions between the gas solutes and the uh, water solvents. Okay? And then we can actually express this in terms of Henry's law, which relates the solubility of a gas to its partial pressure. So when you, when you say partial pressure, that is the pressure of a gas as if it were alone in a system. All right. So in here we have Sg, which is the solubility of the gas, is equal to uh, K, which is our constant, Henry's law. Henry's constant or Henry's law constant and then which is specific for a particular uh, gas solute and a liquid solvent uh, pairing all right and then PG is the partial pressure of the gas above the liquid okay so there is a direct relationship between the solubility of a gas and the pressure of the gas above the liquid or the partial pressure so the higher the pressure, the more molecules of gas are close to the solvent and the greater the chances of gas molecules striking the surface and entering the solution. Okay, so here are the implications. The higher the pressure, the greater the solubility. This is in terms of the pressure of the gas huh, above the solution. And the lower the pressure, the fewer molecules of gas are close to the solvent. And therefore, the solubility of the gas will also be lower. So, what's the effect on this for actual systems? So, you might have uh, noticed about uh, carbonated beverages, so Coke, uh, other sodas, for example. So, take note that carbonated beverages are bottled with a partial pressure of carbon dioxide, uh, which is greater than one atmosphere. Now, this one atmosphere is the pressure that we feel from the air around us, okay? And so, at sea level, we experience uh, one atmosphere. Now, what is inside uh, bottled uh, beverages or carbonated beverages is that a carbon dioxide was placed into the system, okay, was forced into the system using a pressure of greater than 1 atm. And so that as the bottle is opened, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases, okay. So if you open the bottle, uh, you might have noticed the bubbling or the fizzing. So that is because the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases, the gases escape from the liquid solution or from the liquid solvent and they esca escape into the air, okay. Bubbles escape from the solution, all right. And so, uh, in terms of temperature also, uh, you might have noticed here in the solubility curve for gases, the higher the temperature, the lower the solubility, okay? And that's why we want coke to be, uh, to be really cold, okay? Or to be uh, almost frozen so that we can feel the, the tangy feeling, okay? Once gases are escaping, okay? So, if it is not, if it's warm, Okay, it tastes quite different and that is because probably uh, the carbon dioxide gases have already escaped. 
all right so that's the effect of temperature in uh, gas solutions the higher the temperature the lower the solubility of the gases okay so carbonated so in uh, as mentioned carbonated soft drinks are more bubbly if they are stored in the refrigerator and in terms of um, for example marine systems okay uh, there must be oxygen present in the water for the animal the uh, marine for marine life to th thrive so if there is warmer temperature for example in the lake then there will be less oxygen that will be dissolved all right so warm lakes have less o2 dissolved in them than cool lakes so those are uh the effects of temperature and pressure on the solubility of liquids gases or solids so i hope you learned something from this video and for now we take a short break and you know do your warm-ups or stretch or what drink your tea or coffee